Hi friends, this is Tammy Bronk with Astrology for Earth Renewal, and this is the first of my monthly um, astrology kind of scans. So what I'm going to be doing here in the next few minutes is just looking at a, a big picture kind of overview, a scan, a snapshot of what it is that we, we are moving through energetically over the course of the next month. So, um, so glad to be with you. And I just want to say in this moment that um, it's, it's a new moon. We're in the new moon window. And one of the ways to understand the new moon is that whatever's happening precisely at the time of the new moon is kind of setting the tone for the month to come. So I'm going to work with that framework. So yesterday, June 3rd in the morning, the sun and the moon came together in the sign of Gemini, conjunct Aldebaran, which is a really incredible star. It's an enormous star, much bigger than our sun. Uh, that is the eye of the, the bull constellation. And so with with the moon activating that part of the sky, it, it brings to mind this experience that, uh, this knowledge that we live right at this moment in the time of a great age change, a time where we're shifting from one era, one age to another. And, you know, we all know this, we all see this, everything is shifting and changing so quickly, time is accelerated, uh, there's so much in our world that is an absolute revisioning in our lives, in our world, things can change really quickly, this can be a good thing, can be challenging also, but it also can be a very good thing. Um, so the reason I bring the age change up is because about 5,000 years ago, the, the spring equinox sun would have been aligned perfectly with Aldebaran, the eye of the bull. And that would have been the indication that we were living at that time in the age of Taurus, which was, because Taurus has to do with the bull, the bull constellation can also be seen as the uterus. It's the shape of the uterus. That's why the bull is connected to the goddess religions. So we then yesterday had this opportunity to tune into, and for the entire month, what might have been the experience of humanity, of our ancestors, through these matriarchal, this matriarchal age, which you could say was much more peaceful, much more embodied, much more where the, the feminine was, was more of the dominant energy. So uh, one of the themes for this month that I'm seeing really big and clear, and I speak to it now with the sun in Gemini, Mercury in Gemini, moon still in Gemini for about another hour, uh, is this energy of both ends, you know, where we can, in the way I like to think about this is, okay, say I've got two different energies inside of me that don't know how to get along. So for example, I have Gemini moon. I have Saturn on top of my Gemini moon. Those energies don't know how to get, to, get along very well. Saturn can be, um, when it's kind of a downer, Saturn is just like, oh, everything sucks. The world is falling apart. Everything's bad. You need to do something about it right now. You need to step into your, step into your duty boots and do everything because you ought to and climate change. And, um, you know, everything is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. That's like kind of wounded Saturn. Then you have Gemini, which is like, oh, I'm just going to pretend like nothing's happening. I'm just going to do a spiritual bypass, or I'm just going to flit around here or there and do whatever I want and just have fun and play and, um, you know, have my little glitter pony like show. And, and it's just fun and playful and whatever. And that's great. Um, so, <laughs> but, but actually what happens with Gemini that's also not much fun sometimes is that um, if Gemini doesn't have a core, if Gemini is wounded, then she won't really actually have the full experience of life. She's missing it. She's out of touch. So these two energies, when you're, when you're navigating the healthy Gemini energy of both and, there can be an alchemy with other energies. You can move into this more shapeshifter magic of taking the two very different energies and creating a playful field big enough where they can come into a new dynamic, a new dance. So the way that might look, the way that looks for me right now internally is huh, actually, it's way more fun when I engage with the world from the premise that I'm a magician. I know I have so many tools. I know how to work with dreaming. I know how to work with the night sky cosmology. I know how to work with my intuition. More and more, I'm also, I've always been gaining tools around how to work magic with other people, how to play in ways that really create new alchemy. So how do I uh, apply those tools then in a creative, magical way to the issues that I see around me that are mine to tackle. And uh, so how can I bring more play, more creativity, more magic into addressing these issues that I find are the ones for me to approach? And what I basically said is I won't do it unless it's fun. 
And when I say fun, fun is not this shallow, superficial thing. I, what it is, it's, it's actually like I get to engage the brilliance of my instinct, of my inner child to apply to these situations instead of coming from somebody else's story about how it should be. That's just, there's no life in it. There's no play. There's no fun. There's no magic. So forget it. That's one of my versions of both and. So I would ask you, where in your life do you have a both and like these energies that live inside of you that are always like bickering and fighting and don't get along that you can create a bigger field and say, hey, how might we get along? What's a new way we can dance together and create that space? So that's one of the themes. A, another theme has to do with the fact that as of tonight, the crescent moon should be visible for many of us in the West and it will be in the part of the sky that is like close to the center of the sacred hoop, which the Lakota referred to this hoop of stars. It it's, uh, encompasses the winter triangle, the Pleiades, Sirius um, is beneath it, Orion's belt. Um, so this is the sacred hoop. So the moon will be within that hoop. And also the summer solstice sun will be at the center of that hoop. Mercury is currently at the center of that hoop. So over the course of the month, that entire hoop will be activated. And um, that area of the sky was known to many uh, of our uh, uh, numerous indigenous groups as being kind of the birthplace where souls are birthed into this world, into this dimension. And uh, for example, there are also many uh, numerous indigenous groups that would say that they, their people, their lineage comes from the Pleiades or their lineage comes from Sirius. This is where our ancestors come from. Um, and so, and in fact, where I live right now in Missouri, the Osage, who were the original inhabitants of this land, were, um, they also said, as many cultures did, they came from the sky. They were star beings and they flew down to the earth on the back of red oak acorns. And there's a lot more to that story that I love, but I encourage you as well to learn about the stories of the indigenous people of your place. It's a very powerful, magical, Gemini kind of thing to do. Um, okay, so, so where the heck was I going with that? Um, okay, so the moon is at the center of the sky that is kind of a birth point right now, and that's gonna be activated all month. So we are also, as we do the medicine of Gemini, healthy Gemini, which is bringing the, the polarity, the both and together to create some new thing, there is a birth that happens. There is this powerful, beautiful birthing. Um, and so we're giving birth to ourselves. We're giving birth to new ideas. We're giving birth to um, new kinds of dynamics in our relationships with others. Uh, so there's this giving birth experience. Um, so I'd invite you to ask, what's, what's coming alive in me? What's wanting to be birthed in me? And how can I nourish what is coming alive and birthing in my world? And how can I just, you know, shower what is vulnerable and small and wants to become bigger, whether it's a new dream, a new vision, which it might likely be. How can I nourish it, guard it, protect it, and take the steps needed to help it grow into its full form? That's, that's another big theme. And I know for myself, I've been coming into that with, um, I feel like so much is constellating for me after a long period of gestation into this bigger dream that's starting to really take form. And so now I'm starting to put out feelers. I'm starting to connect the dots and create that. Um, I'm creating that strong sacred container within which this being can, can continue to grow and flourish. And actually a container isn't quite the right thing. It's, it's more um, continuing to feed it as it begins to grow and become a toddler and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I've been in this little container and now I'm coming out. Like maybe a lot of you are in that place too. So what are you giving birth to and how can you take care of what it is you want to give birth to? And, and as I mentioned before, there is something about this. Um, this is a month for, for new visions coming into the bigger vision of why I'm here. What is my sacred purpose in the world? And that's partially because Jupiter is squaring uh, Neptune, and that's active for much of the month, and also because our full moon is going to be at galactic center close to Neptune and activating that square. So we're really dreaming into what is this next, you know, what is my place in this big unfolding story, and what's the juiciest kind of thing that I can imagine doing with my time? What is it that my heart longs to do? And if you feel really stuck and really low and really like you've been there for a long time, you don't know how to get out, Consider the possibility that your dream isn't big enough. And when I say that, I want to anchor us into reality by saying that um, 
in conjunction, both and, with that maybe my dream isn't big enough is the reality that if we are really out of our bodies, if we're really trying to dissociating, which many of us do, we have a million ways to do it, then if we're just focusing on what we want to do in the future all the time, it's not going to happen. That's not real. Um, but the problem is simply that we're not also anchored in the present moment, in our bodies, in the now, in the moment, in um, our current experience. So we need both. Uh, and that's the third thing I want to say is it's all right here. And when I say it's all right here, this is an experience I've been having lately after a lot, two and a half years of resistance to the reality that I have as my home base right now. Once again, my home ground of Missouri, I love Missouri, but there's a part of me that's like, oh, I'm an astrologer. Uh, uh, I'm living in Missouri, uh, the place where now we have no, we will soon have no um, abortion services, for example. That's kind of terrifying. Um, so part of me has been in resistance to that and thinking, where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go to be in the right place where my people will be? Um, of course, I have a lot of beautiful people here, but I've been in a big resistance. So the last few days, something has broken open. And I will say part of that is that I get the both and of, hey, guess what? I'm a nomadic person. And I actually have this big vision that's coming into fruition now that makes it so that I am bilocal that makes it so that I am um, actively uh, a, a global citizen with this, this purpose that helps me be able to tie back to here and also to these other um, passion projects. So I'm finding the ways to have both ends. I get it all. I get it all, and it's aligned with my sole purpose. So that's coming alive inside of me. But part of where that begins is by saying, wow, this is where I am. How can I relax, take a deep breath, and recognize that what I need is all around me if I can stay in the vibration of what is really thrilling about this dream that I thought was too big, but that I keep coming back to because I just can't help it because it's so amazing. And what if I stop slapping myself upside the head and saying, what are you thinking? You can never do that. I say, no, actually I can. If I am fully anchored in the present and I am able to really deeply connect to the wisdom and the truth of my ancestors, I'm connected to divine source, I can do that thing. It just might take a little time, but maybe quicker than I think, if I am following what's right in front of me that's taking me there. So it's all right here is part of that equation. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So um, let me know if this was helpful for you, and if you would like for me to keep doing these in the future. And have a wonderful, wonderful um, day.